Hello guys, this is Pruttoy. Hope you are doing well. Before starting, let me share with you that this year marks the 25th anniversary of the first ever wireless phone call that took place in India. I wanted to do something to commemorate this event. So, I came up with this video. Watch till the end and have fun. Our modern digital world is all about keeping everyone and everything connected. Faster and reliable communication is fueling the momentum of the fourth industrial revolution. When we look at our nation, we can see how technology has influenced our lives drastically. In the present day, almost everyone has access to mobile phones. They have become a part of our daily lives. On 31st July 1995, the then Chief Minister of West Bengal, Mr. Jyoti Boshu, made the country's first cell phone call with the then Union Communications Minister, Mr. Shukram, from a Nokia Ringo handset. The call connected the Writers' Building in Calcutta and the Sanchar Bhavan in Delhi. From spending 16 rupees per minute back then to as low as 6 paise per minute now, we have come a long way. But do we realize how technology makes this possible? Let me explain the basic working of mobile or cellular networks. I will start from the beginning. Every mobile device has a piece of hardware that acts like human ears. We call it a microphone. You may notice a tiny round opening on the bottom side of your mobile device. That is where the microphone is located and the opening allows sound to reach this equipment. The microphone is used to capture your voice which is then converted into electronic signals by your phone that can be transmitted using its built-in antenna in the form of radio waves. Radio waves transmitted from mobiles cannot travel quite far without being obstructed by say buildings, trees, hills or even the weather. The waves may also get disturbed by other surrounding electromagnetic waves. That is why we need cellular towers to pick up the radio signals transmitted by mobile devices. These signals usually carry information like your voice, text messages or the internet data packets when you like your friend's Facebook post or subscribe to YouTube channels like this one. Don't forget to hit the bell icon. So anyways, a tower receives the information transmitted from your phone's antenna. This radio signal must be sent to the destination tower so that the person you are calling can receive the call. Now here is the fun fact. The signal is processed further because it needs to travel through optical fibers. Yes, optical fibers are wires. They are fast and reliable. Turns out your wireless network is not actually 100% wireless. Therefore, your voice which was originally sound wave was converted to electronic then radio signal but now it is converted to light. All this happens in a very short amount of time that you don't even notice when you are talking to someone on the phone. Now I think that's pretty impressive, don't you think? If so, just press the like button for the facts. Let us continue. How do you think the receiving tower knows where the destination tower is? That is an important part of the process of connecting a call. Your signals from the receiving towers are sent to the nearby mobile telephone switching office or MTSO that serves your geographic area. These MTSOs or MSTs or telephone exchanges simply have come a long way from telephone operators manually connecting calls using cord pairs on switching boards to modern offices equipped with voice communication and broadband data capabilities. Now you know that unless the SIM card is put inside the phone, you will not be able to avail your operator's services. The SIM, which stands for Subscriber Identification Module, is used to, well, you know, identify you as a customer or subscriber of the mobile network and provide you with the services as per your plan. 
the MTSOs keep track of customer's location so that they know which tower is near which customer and where to forward incoming or outgoing calls so that the customer can receive it. If you ever step outside your home MTSO zone, you will find that your phone shows a roaming alert by placing the letter R beside the tower or network icon on your phone. So that is roughly how the location of the destination tower is determined. But say we are in a moving car or traveling by train, we can still make calls without network disruption, to an extent of course. That is a major convenience we have and it is possible by a feature of the network called handover. It is a jump from one cell tower to another while staying connected. Our mobiles automatically scan for multiple towers and choose the one with the strongest signal. Mobiles are designed to search and jump from tower to tower based on a predefined signal strength threshold. Now you know why your mobile's battery drains faster when you are on board a fast moving train. Finally, after the destination tower has received the information through the MTSOs, the optical signal goes through a reverse conversion process to turn into radio, then electronic and back to sound, that is your voice. Only this time, instead of a microphone on the other end, there is a speaker system, so the receiver can hear you. That sums up only the bare bones of mobile networks. There are numerous other related topics like network generations, protocols, their effects on the internet, security issues, uh, or current telecom operators. Perhaps they will be discussed in another video. So let me know what you think in the comments. Your support motivates me to make more videos for you. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.